we are now in a very auspicious time, Purushottam month, most auspicious, as we will read now from this article of Shila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. First we will read this one, and then there is another one from Puranas, from where Bhaktivinoda Thakur gave summary. But there are some, those stories are mentioned, so I want to read that also after this article. The Vedic Arya Shastras means noble scriptures. The Vedic noble scriptures are divided into two sections. Smarta, literature based on Smriti, and Paramartha, transcendental literature based on Shruti. Shruti means that which is, now I'm explaining, Shruti means that which is directly heard from Supreme Lord. And those who have heard Shruti and they have realized the absolute truth, what they will write, scriptures, that is called Smriti. Purpose is one, but Smriti generally smart us they are more following that Varna Ashram Dharma, Karma Kant, for gradual upliftment. Paramartha means transcendental, like Upanishads. They will give uh, that the goal is liberation from this world. And of course, then there are different uh, grades of liberation. But point is to come out from this material entanglement and go into transcendental eternal realm. Back to Tagur continuing, those who are eligible, adhikari, means qualified, for this smarta section, do not have any natural inclination or taste for the Paramartha Shastras. As I told some days back, in Bhagavatam it is written like Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, and different people are qualified for different according to their uh, level. So those who want material benefits, they will do this uh, smarta. So here Bhakti Thakur continuing, the thoughts, principles, activities, and life goal of every human being is constituted according to his respective ruchi. Ruchi means taste or inclination, natural liking for something. So they, ha they have liking for these material benefits, so they will follow Vedic Shastras to attain that. Generally, smartas accept those scriptures which are in accordance with their respective ruchi, inclination. Having greater adhikar, that is qualification, for Smarta Shastra, they do not demonstrate much regard for Paramartika Shastra. They want to follow those procedures, not this. Providence is the agent behind the creation of these two divisions. Providence means like God. Therefore, Undoubtedly, the maintainer of the world must have a hidden purpose in having made such an arrangement. So he made these two divisions. As far as I understand, the purpose is that the jivas sequentially make progress in their level of consciousness by remaining steadfast in their respective adhikar qualification. By deviating from one's adhikar, one falls down. Like in school, those who are newcomer, they should enter that first class. Then they will, that, that will be beneficial for them. Then they can enter second class like this. The same building, same school, but you should not, if you are eligible for a first class, that 1A, 1B like this, you have to go into that room, not into 6A or C. Then that will not be good. You cannot uh, progress in that way. According to your qualification, you have to uh, 
progress. If you deviate, then you will fall down. You will get nothing that you cannot understand. And this you are not doing what is for you. Then you will get go nowhere. According to one's activities, a person attains two types of adhikar qualifications. Karma adhikar and bhakti adhikar. Means qualification for karma, that is activities prescribed by Vedic Shastra, like Varnash and Dharma, and Bhakti Adhikar means direct service of Supreme Lord. As long as one maintains his karma adhikar, he derives benefit from the path shown by this smarta section. When he enters Bhakti Adhikar, by transgressing the karma adhikar means he already fulfilled that, then he develops a natural ruchi inclination for the paramartika or transcendental path. When he gains that qualification, then naturally he will progress. One example also is in Shastra, you will find different avatars of Supreme Lord. So one is Buddha avatar. I already explained that the Buddha avatar, Supreme Lord in the form of Buddha, and this Siddhartha Gautam Buddha are two different persons, different places of appearance, different timings, different teaching. Uh, so, but the point was, they were some Brahmins, they were misusing Vedic sacrifices to kill animals indiscriminately. So in order to stop that, Buddha Avatar came and he told them, no, this is not good. Supreme Dharma is non-violence. Ahimsa Parama Dharma. Then they said, no, it is in Vedas. But the point was they were misusing the Vedas. Then, then he said, don't follow the Vedas, you follow me. Then they were following and he gave them procedure for their level of uh, capacity. They will not be able to understand about God and devotion to Him, no. So first they have to purify them, themselves, by following those processes which He gave. They were atheistic, very atheistic and tamaguna like this. They cannot understand about God. So first then, then Shankara Charjo came and He said, no, you have to follow the Vedas. There is one and as mentioned in Vedas also and liberation that is mentioned in Vedas, you have to attain that. But he gave Brahma Jyoti as, as eternal, that um, eternal consciousness, not only continuing that. So then they accepted him and the Vedas and they were pursuing that because they, they had inclination. After that, then Ramanuja came and he started to speak about eternal devotion to Supreme Lord. Yes, you are spirit, you are not matter, that is true. But you are not Supreme Spirit. He is a person, you are also a person, and you belong to him, you have to serve him in this way. That is in Vedas, you are accepting Vedas, this is the teaching of the Vedas, I will show you. So in this way, gradual development. So like here, those who are followers of Veda, they are kar karma kandis, they will follow Vedas, but with the desire to get these worldly benefits. But that will be beneficial for them because of regulation by Veda. They will, their consciousness will be purified, and then they will get qualification for engaging in direct service of Krishna. Like in school, first class, when you finish exams, everything, then you can go to second class. So these two are there. And it is meant, uh, God made such an arrangement. Therefore, Providence has made these two divisions of Shastra, Smarta and Paramarta. The Smarta Shastra has made various types of rules and regulations in order to help one attain Nishta or steadfastness in karma adhikar. In many instances, it even demonstrates indifference towards Paramartha Shastra to make people attain specific nishta, that is steadiness in such rules and regulations. So for those who are for karma kan, 
they will have their own process. And it, they will also say, don't follow that thing. That is bad. Like in school, if one boy, he is in first A class, he has to enter that room. If he roams around and he wants to enter into sixth, six A, then they will say, no, that is bad. It is not for you. You have to go that class. So in Karma Kant also, they will say, no, that the eternal, no. Now we are now here concrete reality, so we need this. So in this way, they are so that they will be steady in their progress, means in their process for which they are eligible, they sometimes also have to criticize. Also, it is same Shastra or same uh, well-wisher, but he has to instruct according to uh, qualification and he even has to negate or criticize his other part. But when he will, that person will become eligible, then he will say, no, this is good. That is not good. In reality, yes, although Shastra is one, it manifests in two ways for the people. If the jiva gives up adhikar, nishta, that is uh, steadiness in his own qualification and process which is attached to it, if he gives up this, he can never attain auspiciousness. For this reason, the shastras have been divided into two, smarta and paramartha those who are attracted by non-eternal benefits and those who have inclination for liberation or eternal benefit. By dividing the whole year in 12 parts, the Smarta Shastras have ascertained the auspicious or religious dharmic activities for these 12 months. All the karma religious activities which are part of the Varna Ashram system that is following your uh, Kshatriya Brahmana, this you know, Brahmachari Grihasta. When allotted to 12 months, it means in this month you have to do this, in this month you have to do this, all these different duties, but they leave the extra month, that is Adimas, devoid of any such activity. There is no religious performance in Adimas, extra month. In order to keep lunar months and solar months in tally, one has to, no, one month has to be included every 32 months. Here there is typing mistake. They wrote excluded, but actually it, it properties included. Every 32 months, this extra month has to be included in the calendar to harmonize them. The name of that month is Adimas or extra month. Smartas have discarded this extra month, considering it abominable. They gave it names such as Malamas or impure month chore, mass, thieving month, one who will take away from you, and so on. So here, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta gave the exact calculation uh, that one extra month comes after every 32 months, 16 days, 4 and 4 hours of the solar calendar. So it is not that every year it comes in same period. Sometimes it may come during winter, sometimes like now summer, sometimes spring, it depends. But the point is, as we will later hear, this period by the will of Krishna is most auspicious. So it, will, it can, whenever it will come by the will of Krishna, then it is most auspicious. Uh, so, karma candies, they will say, no, this month is very bad, 
so you cannot perform any activities in this month. Uh, it is very bad. Impure month. On the other hand, the most worshipable Paramartha Shastra, that which is for eternal welfare, acclaims Adimas as the most outstanding month for transcendental activities. Since life in this world is temporary, it is not proper to spend any part of one's life meaninglessly. Our Buddha says, so if we will not do anything in this month, then what? We will do sinful, we will not do any religious, no any dharmic, pious activity, then what? Then we will do sinful activities or what? That is not the purpose. So here, uh, it is imperative, so life is temporary, so you should not waste any moment of this life. It is imperative for the jiva to remain continuously engaged in Hari Bhajan, means worship of Supreme Lord, at every moment. Thus, the Adimas, which comes every third year, may also become useful for Hari Bhajan. This is indeed the deep meaning of Paramartha Shastras. Even though karmis perceive this month to be devoid of all auspicious activities, for the deliverance of all the jivas, Paramartha Shastra, on the other hand, has ascertained this, this period as the most conducive for Hari Bhajan, most favorable. Paramartha Shastra says, O Jiva, during this Adimas, means extra month, why should you remain lazy in Hari Bhajan? Sri Golokanath, that is Krishna, master of Goloka, himself has ascertained that this month is the best of all. It is superior even to the greatly pious months of Kartik, Mag, and Vaishak. In this month, you should perform archan, that is worship of Sri Sri Radha Krishna, with special rules or moods for bhajan. You will thereby attain all types of perfection. So this is one part. Tomorrow we will continue with this article. So you should not waste time. You should worship, and this month is the best of all. By the will of Krishna, as you will hear tomorrow, it is not different from him. Even the 12 months in Vedic calendar, they have their presiding deity of sun, sun god. Is this one, this one, this one. In 12 forms, sun. But in this month, uh, because there are Dvadasha Aditya, 12 sons or 12 forms of sun. But in this month, in Purushottam month, Supreme Lord himself, Purushottam becomes sun to preside over this month. It's a transcendental. Like our Gurudev told in Navadip, the holy place of past tense of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we're doing Parikrama and sun was hot. And we are complaining Gurudev said, no, you should not think this, this is uh, something bad. No, here this sun is not the same sun. Although we cannot understand this with our material senses and literally, but those who realize soul, they can see. That is Vedic knowledge. Gurudev said, this is not same sun. Here sun is transcendental sun. And he will make your body very soft for purification and so that you can engage in the service of Supreme Lord. So like that, in this month, this month is presided by Supreme Lord as Son, not ordinary. So tomorrow we will hear further about Purushottam month because it is 
everything is by the will of Krishna. He's making all the laws in this world and everything. He can change or he can, whatever he wants, he wants to do, he can do. He can appear in this world in his transcendental form and he can bring his own dham, his own associates, everything, and his name, mantra, all this transcendence. So like that, he can make certain period also transcendental time by his will. This year, at this time, then next time, it will be another time in the year, but that period will be by the will of Krishna, it will be transcendental and most powerful for Buddha. So tomorrow we'll hear. Also, two days back, I spoke how Brahma, four-headed Brahma, the create, secondary creator of this world, he could not accept why they are saying Krishna is supreme Lord. It is impossible. He's a cowherd boy. He's a son of Gop, cow, cowherds. He has no opulence, nothing. So I don't want to repeat that. If you missed that Harikata, then you can hear introduction or preparation for Purushottaman, the first part, there you will find how Brahma was rejecting that Krishna is Supreme Lord. And then even after examining, he, he also examined and then he also stole his boys and friends and cows and everything. And he flatly rejected. He cannot be Supreme Lord by his own intelligence and by his knowledge of Shastra, Vedic scripture and knowledge of Supreme Lord in the Oven Reverence. So here Brahma is of course doing pastime, but we have to get the teaching that no one can recognize Supreme Lord without his grace. So Brahma, when ultimately he became bewilder, then he understood no one can bewilder me except Supreme Lord. I can bewilder all living entities in this world because I am supreme entity here. But no one can bewilder me. So now I'm seeing I'm bewildered. It means he must be Supreme Lord. And then Krishna showed him all the Narayana Murtis, Vasudev Murtis coming. Then, uh, then Brahma understood yes, he's the source of all Narayanas. That form of God I know. He's my father, but I could not recognize him. So this pastime was made. Then Brahma completely surrendered to Krishna. After understanding, he is my Supreme Lord, my father. Then Krishna blessed him with the vision of his sweet form. With flute and everything. In, transcendent, in transcendental perspective. Before Brahma also could see but could not recognize. He didn't get the transcendental vision. But now he got it about Brindavan, how charming it is and how Krishna is charming. Before he did not like why Krishna is keeping food in left hand. That is anti-Vedic. You should take food in right hand and eat with right hand. Why he's... But now he was very attracted to this. And Brindavan and everything. So fully submitting, then Krishna graced him and he could realize then he started these prayers, which we will hear during whole Purushottam month. So the first verse is Shri Brahmovach. This is from Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto. 14th chapter. Shri Brahmovach. No media te bra vapushe tarit ambaraya, gunjavatamsa paripichala san mukaya, vanya sraje kavala vetra vishana venu, lakshma shri mridu pade pashu panga jaya. 
Lord Brahma said, My dear Lord, you are the only worshipable Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and therefore I offer my humble obeisances and prayers just to please you. O son of the king of the cowherds, king of the cowherds is Nanda Maharaj, so O son of Nanda Maharaj, your transcendental body is dark blue, like a new cloud. That is only comparison, like, so that we may get some idea, but it is not anything material. Krishna's uh, color is transcendental color. It, is, it cannot be compared with anything. It is totally different. Only those who have re, uh, got realization, they can. They are giving only some comparison. But you should not think that this is some material color. No. So your transcendental body is dark blue like a new cloud. Your garment is brilliant like lightning. And the beauty of your face is enhanced by your gunja earrings and the peacock feather on your head. Wearing garlands of various forest flowers and leaves and equipped with a herding stick, a buffalo horn and a flute, you stand beautifully with a morsel of food in your hand. He could see now this forum. So I'm reading the commentary given by uh, disciples of Shlaisi Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj because in his con, this Srimad uh, Bhagavatam up to 10th canto, 13th chapter, it is directly translated by and commented by Shlaisi Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj and from this chapter onwards by his disciples. And also, I will, after I will also read the commentary by Vishana Chakravarti Thakur. So here, commentary. In the previous chapter, Brahma, the creator of the universe, tried to be wilder the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna, by stealing his cowherd boyfriends and calves. But by a slight exhibition of Krishna's own mystic potency, Brahma himself was completely bewildered. And now, with great humility and devotion, he offers his humble obeisances and prayers unto the Lord. The word kavala in this verse refers to a morsel of rice mixed with yogurt that Krishna held in his left hand. According to Sanatana Goswami, the Lord held a cowherding stick and a buffalo horn pressed under his left arm and his flute was placed under his belt. Beautiful young Krishna, decorated with multicolored forest minerals, exhibited opulences far greater than those of Vaikuntha. Although Brahma had seen innumerable four-armed forms of the Lord, he now surrendered unto the lotus feet of the two-armed form of Krishna, who appeared as the son of Nanda Maharaj. Brahma offered his prayers to that form, and this form of Krishna is the original one of Supreme Lord. Govinda, Krishna with the flute, son of Nanda Maharaj, is original. From him, all other forms are coming. Brahma also realized, so he is offering prayers to him. Greater opulence does not mean uh, in uh, like gold. If you go to Bekunta, they have everything golden, diamond like this. But here, minerals, forest flowers, opulence in the in the in the sense of rasa, the transcendental bliss one gets by being in contact with Krishna. That is greater opulence here. Is everything is very sweet, very charming. And there is no oven reverence, but intimate, sweet, delightful relation. That is why, according to Rasa, this is supreme 
forum and place and associates and everything. Although God is only one, there are not many gods, same person, but doing different pastimes, like king in a court and king in his own palace room with his wife and children, the same person. But Lila is different. Wife can slap king, but in court, this is not possible. There he is in that mood. So like that in Narayan, a certain type of mood and worship and Brindaban is another. So I'm reading also the, to this same verse commentary by Shila Bishwana Chakrati Thakur. This chapter relates how Brahma Though maintaining a mood of reverence, immersed himself in the great ocean of Krishna's sweetness. After praising Sri Krishna with great devotion, mixed with knowledge, Brahma asks some questions. That is like a summary. Then, Vishwanath Chakuritakur is saying, I am not afraid if the real devotees who are relishing great bliss by collecting loads of jewels, mock my stance of selling jewels, means in brackets, offering a few jewels. Means here, Bishwana Chakri Thakur, our guru, in our guru parampara, previous guru, uh, he's, tell, he's expressing his humility. I am giving only few jewels from this chapter. So, but I'm not afraid if devotees, those who are superior devotees, they are collecting much more jewels. If they will mock me, I'm not afraid of this. He's expressing his humility as appropriate for every pure devotee. So I'm not hesitating meditating with determination solely upon the lotus feet of my guru my heart desires to cross of the ocean of brahma's prayers so by the inspiration of gurudev i want to sing the glories of this of krishna and uh, to commend this Brahma's prayer. So always this humbleness is there in devotees. Like our Guru Dev also told, although I am, I am conditioned soul, I am full of defects and I have no good hold of language and all this. But because it is the order of my Guru Dev, I it is for my own good. I have to speak what I heard from my Guru Dev and Vaishnavas and scriptures to purify my mind and to get exclusive one point in devotion. So in this way, they are expressing humbleness and they are doing their service. That is proper service. If there is any pride, then there, there cannot be a service to Krishna. Now, Brahma has directly realized that Nanda Nandan, means son of Nanda Maharaj, is the source of all forms of Eternity, knowledge, and bliss means Satchidananda forums. The source is this Krishna, Brindavan Krishna. Having attained firm devotion at the lotus seat of Krishna, Brahma profusely praises the Lord. Brahma said, My dear Vasudev, you are the source of countless forms and are the only worshipable Idya Lord. You are glorified by everyone in the universe from me down to the grass. Brahma is highest living entity in universe and grass is the lowest. That is why Mahaprabhu told we have to be even more humble than a blade of grass, more lower than blade of grass. Our Gurudev explained, grass is lowest, everyone is stepping on it. 
but when you step off, then grass again will go up. Before cannot resist everyone stepping and cannot do anything. But when you step off, then she will come up. Means she's telling, I am someone in this world. I have some ego. I am someone. But being humbler than a blade of grass means you should not have any ego of this world. Nothing, totally nothing. You have to consider yourself as eternal servant of Krishna and his devotees. That is real ego, not any world ego. So we have to be humbler than a blade of grass. In order to attain you, I offer these praises unto you. Or simply to please you, I glorify you in verse. Means in verses, in poetry. Your transcendental body, dark blue like a fresh rain cloud, is wrapped in a garment more brilliant than lightning. Brahma's words describing Krishna suggest two things. The earth gets relief from the scorching heat of summer through the cloud of Krishna's rain. When Krishna is present, in this world, then earth is getting cooled. And the Chataka bird like devotees sustain their lives with the mercy pouring from the rain cloud of Krishna. You know, that is that special bird Chataka. His, his nature is such that he will not drink any water except from rain. Even if he will be thirsty and will die, and there is much water around him, lakes, rivers, some from rain, all these things, rain falling on the ground and there is some uh, water there, will not take. He will only take water from the cloud. No energy. So he's always up praying. And sometimes thunderbolt is killing, and sometimes rain, so he's fully surrendered, only up. So devotees, they are like Chataka birds. They don't want anything from this world, nothing. They are only subsisting on nectar of Krishna. So Krishna is dark blue like a monsoon cloud that is cooling in the scorching heat of summer. So when Krishna is present, then earth is feeling that soothing effect. And devotees, they are getting from this rain cloud of Krishna, rain cloud like Krishna, they are getting their life sustained, getting that nectar. So tomorrow we will continue. This is not the complete commentary. This is only one part to this verse of Bishana Chakravati Thakur. Uh, so we'll hear tomorrow.